Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Well, there's no doubt about it. Nintendo games rock. <laughs> movies based on Nintendo games blow. <laughs> Therefore, movies about Nintendo games blow rocks. <laughs> Thus, we enter the horrifying realms of The Wizard, Nintendo's biggest advertising fuck-up since Virtual Boy. The film about a little boy who seems to be a prodigy with Nintendo games literally teaches the lesson that Nintendo games bring families together. And as we all know, Nintendo games make us want to do nothing but destroy our adversaries. So the idea of Nintendo being kind of this 8-bit Buddha was pretty damn stupid. But still, they advertised this movie big, with stars like Fred Savage, Christian Slater, a shitload of video games, a Nintendo tournament face-off, and even a sneak peek at their latest groundbreaking game which wasn't yet released. When you're a kid growing up in the 80s and 90s, this looked unbelievable. I mean, every kid had to see this. So, why is this film a letdown of digital proportions? Let's take a look. First of all, let's take a look at this thrilling opening. Pretty exciting, huh? The Wizard! Champions of Nintendo duking it out in a one-on-one -on -one tournament of the Nintendo Master- My god, is he still walking?! Seriously, the opening of this film is nothing but a kid walking down a straight, narrow road. Fasten your seatbelts, we're in for a wild ride! Just sit down and have fun, damn it! Okay, so the strange little boy walking down the road is a kid named Jimmy, who just wants to go to California. California. California! He's returned back to his mother and jackass stepfather, where he continues to stare blankly out into space. Apparently, he's been traumatized by the death of his sister, and is seeking an outlet for all his pent-up emotions. I'd like to think that he's searching for a way to express himself. If only there was some kind of game council with two-player gameplay and 8-bit graphics that could allow him to express himself. But that kind of awe-inspiring magic only exists in the wildest realms of our imagination. Meanwhile, we cut to Jimmy's real father, played by Bo Bridges, who surprisingly was available. We also get to see Jimmy's brothers Nick, played by Christian Slater, and Corey, played by Fred Savage. And I never really noticed it before, but Fred Savage is kind of weird. I mean, he doesn't really act like a kid at all. Everything he says sounds like it's being spoken by a high-pitched adult. Are you listening to me? What, you want to see that happen? Huh? You want to see him put Jimmy in a hole? He kind of sounds like a male version of Dakota Fanning, and I don't think that's a good thing. You're getting awful personal, you know. So he sits in his room throwing darts at a map, because I guess that's what kids did before the internet, and decides he wants to take a little vacation. Where? California. No, no, no. California! California. So Corey decides he wants to run away from home and live in California. On his way there, he picks up his brother Jimmy from a mental home, where he literally just walks in the front door and steals him away. Where the fuck security?! I mean, there's no sign, no locked doors, no nothing. Did they just forget that kidnapping is illegal? What a top-notch establishment! I can't believe it! Once news of their runaway hits the parents, the mother and stepfather hire a professional runaway bringer-backer person named Mr. Putman. But Corey's father and brother are destined to get them back first, because Mr. Putman has the audacity to bring them back while being mildly rude. I make my money by bringing kids in and... I don't make it if someone else brings a kid in first. Uh. <laughs> we can't let him bring our children back alive and well with such hideously poor manners. To the shitmobile! <laughs> Meanwhile, Jimmy and Corey stop at a bus station where they discover that Jimmy has a special talent for getting high points on Double Dragon. You got 50,000 on Double Dragon? There, they come across Haley, a girl who also happens to be running away. It's his problem. Just shy. Shy a few bricks, I'd say. Just kicked ass on Double Dragon. Get out of here. Him? Oh, yeah, he could wax your tail. No way. Wanna bet? How much? Got a bus ticket. Could cash it in. What kids talk like this? I mean, seriously, they all talk like 1980s businessmen. I mean, who raised them? Donald Trump? Haley is shocked to find out that Jimmy does beat her at Double Dragon. A boy defeats a girl at a video game? Stop the presses! Your attitude sucks. Meanwhile, Corey's dad and brother continue to search for them after stealing the tree from Harold and Maude, and decide to stay in a hotel. There, Nick hooks up a Nintendo system, which seems to bring this father and son closer together. Doesn't take much intelligence to play that game, does it? You should know. Really close together. Wanna go grab a bite to eat? Really close together. 
I just want to let you know that I'm glad that I'm here. Really uncomfortably, unnaturally, unchristianly close together. I remember those trips we used to take every year. That was great. Yeah. Sleeping with my father. Nintendo. It makes you gay. Now you're playing with incest. Can't even talk to each other. Bring your underwear. Meanwhile, Haley tells Corey and Jimmy about a Nintendo competition where they could win $50,000. And you'll never guess where it's being held. California. Right you are, you little oddball. So the three of them go from pit stop to pit stop, conning people out of money by making bets on video games. Which it seems are mostly played by a lot of middle-aged, stuck-up white businessmen. You know, the usual demographic. Now my brother over here, he could beat you. <laughs> go on! A child defeat me at the children's game? Oh, <laughs> delightfully absurd! While gaining more and more money, one kid recommends Jimmy to the ultimate Nintendo master. He's good, but he never beat Lucas. Lucas? Oh, don't tell me you've never heard of Lucas. He's only the greatest Nintendo player that has ever roamed the universe. And uh, where might we find this Lucas? Within the twilight of the full moon, when the sky is dark, but the fire of the stars pierces through the night. That is where you will find Lucas. <laughs> He's tough. tough. He's cool. But most of all, he's bad. B -b -b bad. Nobody's better than Lucas. You the wizard? No, he is. Is he like a poster child for someone? Hey, Lucas, man, that was great. They say that he's less than a god, but more than a man. Lucas is awesome. Beginning gave me one. I have 97 of them. 97? <gasps> no, all 97 of them? That's impossible! Dirty Harry, Scarface, The Terminator, Lucas. Why don't you just make yourself useful and give me a cold drink? But not only is Lucas a Nintendo master, he is also the keeper of a greater magic. What could be so important that he has to keep in a briefcase? The legends were true. It's even more beautiful than I imagined. Look out, Lucas! Look out! My God! He's a madman! A madman! It's like watching Michelangelo carve his beloved David, but with a cow. I love the power glove. It's so bad. <gasps> yeah, well, uh, just keep your power gloves off her, pal, huh? I'm sorry, I forgot to make room for your spontaneous romance that literally started right now! All this sexual tension gets to Jimmy as he runs out of the room, while Lucas tells Haley that he'll be entering the Nintendo competition too. But surely they don't have any openings. For gods! Is that right? Meanwhile, we take a look at the continuing escapades of Corey's family and the professional child catcher, Mr. Putman. You make money off a little kid, you miserable jerk! You ought to be shot! How dare you try to bring our children back to a safe and sound! Then they partake in some really stupid car scenes that remind me a lot of an old Dukes of Hazard episode. Now then, Duke boys, I better plug in their game genie or look up some cheat codes. Cause there ain't no way they're getting out of this one with all their lives. Nintendo. It makes you want to crash into people. Now you're playing with vehicular manslaughter. So to get ready for the tournament, Jimmy has to study as many Nintendo games as quickly as possible. While playing, they also enlist the help of a Nintendo Power Hotline. Exactly God bless you, Nintendo. Helping kids cheat the right way. That's a compliment. While that's going on, Mr. Putman finally locates the kids outside the swimming pool at a local- WAIT A MINUTE! WHAT THE HELL?! 
Who greenlighted the old man in a speedo? I've been following you across two states. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't focus with an old man's butt cheeks hanging out in the background. I mean, what were they thinking? Did somebody actually look at this scene and say, You know what's missing here? An old man's package. That would really add some much needed drama. It's disgusting. And if you think this movie can't possibly get any more uncomfortable, just listen to this. He touched my breast! I touched her breast. She doesn't have any breasts. Nintendo, it makes you want to touch children. Now you're playing with pedophilia. And that's just wrong. Corey's dad and brother aren't far behind when they come across a guy wearing Jimmy's hat. Where'd you get that hat? A couple kids. They owe me some cash. Hey! I'll tell you where they were going. Where? Lucas! Darwin! So the three kids make it to the competition that's held at the other shameful plug in this movie, Universal Studios, where they come across some very strange adults. Playing ninja? Gay dead! Hey! I'm up here, my little beauties! Move it, move it, move it! You get to your station! You know, I think I finally figured out the main problem with this movie. All the 12-year-olds act like 30-year-olds, and all the 30-year-olds act like 12-year-olds. It's like a topsy-turvy world that only Hollywood's limited understanding of reality could give us. <laughs> That's very funny. While there, they come across an old enemy. Hey, it's the wizard! Lucas! I brought my friends too. I wanted to show them perfection. <laughs> you know, I hope you don't get nervous like last time, Lucas. We wouldn't want you to whiz on someone. <laughs> oh. Let's just hope it's you. Yeah, yeah, I love dark lips. <laughs> oh. Mercy, Lucas! Mercy! But as Jimmy enters the tournament, we find that he actually does pretty good and makes it to the final three, where they get to play a brand new game. A new game? You didn't say there'd be a new game! Nobody said this movie would suck either. Life's a bitch. Deal with it. Later, we find that Mr. Putman has made it to the tournament, too. He almost doesn't spot them until somebody gives away their location. Down there! Over there! Hey! Lucas! As we follow them through a chase-slash-promotional tour of Universal Studios, Putman finally traps them in the back of a storage room just above the tournament. But the kids have an ingenious way to escape. What the hell is that? What a An elevator? What will they think of next? Phones? Horseless carriages? Automated mobiles? I hate you! So Jimmy makes it to the final round where we find the mother of all brand new games is finally revealed. So the game is quite literally on as Jimmy and Lucas go thumb to thumb in an epic battle for Nintendo Godhood. Come on, give me some more, some more. Go, Jimmy, go! Go, go, go! No, Jimmy, no! Remember your training, damn it! You're gonna have to start over, Jimmy, just stay calm! You can do it, Jimmy! Come on! You're falling behind! Catch up! Catch up! Oh my god! No! No! You'll get him next time. So after he wins the tournament, everybody finally starts to head home. But Jimmy finds the dinosaurs that were in Pee-wee's Big Adventure and has to go in. So why did Jimmy want to go to California all this time? It's all of us. I guess I just wanted to leave her in a place where she was happy. Wow, how phenomenally unsatisfying. 
I mean, how much more anticlimactic can you possibly get? If you're gonna have dinosaurs in a movie about Nintendo games, they better fucking eat somebody. Would it do any good? Bottom line, it's always more fun to actually play video games than it is to watch people play video games. And this movie is living proof of it. And on top of that, I think everybody's career actually got destroyed because of this movie. I mean, look at the director. What did he move on to? Just directing the majority of all the Malcolm in the Middle episodes. Okay, bad example. How about Fred Savage? Can you think of anything that he moved on to? What would you do if I sang? Okay, okay. But I'm sure that Christian Slater kid never moved on to any kind of famous publicity. Okay, alright, Jimmy, the little child prodigy in the movie. Surely spending your entire life just playing video games can't get you any kind of fame. <laughs> Oh my god!